This is Odd Planet Radio. Between 1995 and 2000, the number of prescriptions of psychotropic drugs of all kinds for kids more than doubled. The problem with being a child in America today compared to 20 or 30 years ago is that if you are different, if you are agitated, if you are extremely active, you will fall under the gaze of the helping professions, the so-called helping professions. I don't remember anyone I went to school with being on a mind-altering medication, but now the number of children on drugs in this country is astronomical. On the morning of April 10th, 2001, I remember waking up in the morning about 6, my normal time didn't really feel very good, didn't feel like I, I, I was up to going to school that morning, so I, I thought I might, you know, sleep in until about third period, which started around 11. So I set my alarm clock for 11 o'clock, and next thing I remember is waking up in the juvenile detention center in Ephrata, Washington. What went through my mind when I first realized where I was was, you know, where am I, where am I at, what am I doing here, what, what, you know, what happened today, what, what went wrong? They asked me if I knew why I was there, and I had no idea. I asked them what what had happened, and they told me that I had taken a gun to my, my third period class and held them hostage for a number of minutes. Welcome to Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. We're going to talk today with Steve Richards, and Steve Richards has been on the show several times talking about treatments that he deploys shamanistically for the treatment of people with DID, PTSD, and the effects of psychological warfare. We're going to talk today about drugging, about the use of psychoactive pharmaceutical drugs, specifically on the children of not just the United States, but around the world. We're also going to talk about the impact of external influences, specifically spiritual and multidimensional, why this is occurring now. And as Steve points out, this is the time of the harvest, the time of harvesting of souls. It's time to deal with these issues. It's time to line ourselves back up to the way the human biology, the human psychology, and the human spirit was designed to function. With my guest, Steve Richards. Okay, so we were talking about the medications that are being prescribed, and I guess that goes into a whole area of what these medications are actually doing on the spiritual level, because that's what you're dealing with. And that's correct. For many other areas, of course, but that's one of the areas we are dealing with, and that is understanding how, how we are actually a multidimensional being. Understanding that we are actually a hologram of time. And every shot of fact of that hologram, which has memory stored within it. And what happens is that the hologram part of us, external part of us in the cells, is part of our soul, and it can be programmed. Now, what happens is it's part of the vehicle. You often hear people when they say, you know, they've been drinking, and they do a, they do a range of all different things that's not them. 
and they don't remember the next day. It's because someone else was actually driving the vehicle at that time. Now, what happens when you have the medication is it lowers this resistance within you. You know, recently it's interesting because um, one of the interesting things that happened recently, I was doing some research, and I came across over 25 sites around the world are these, are these paintings on walls, and they're all the same type of paintings, and they're like a stick figure of a human. It's got a head, it's got arms, it's got a stick body and legs, but it's got two little balls of energy, both on the sides between the arms and the hips. And it's only recently that a um, scientist working with dimensions, he started looking at it in dimensions and photographing dimensions of this and realised that what it was, was way back in time, man had the ability to see energy fields around other people and things. And around the human was this torus field. And what the balls were was the torus field energy, two balls on each side, which are these paintings all around the world that they could see. We have gone from this internal world of spirit and, and manifesting by rearranging our universe into the external world of manipulation of the soul. We've gone too far to the right. We've got totally away from the left. Cultures that were coming from the left and are aware of this spiritual awareness and energy around beings and trees and other things, they've done nothing but knock them, ridicule them, and then try to deprogram and reprogram them, program them into a modern day system way out here to the right. You know, I looked at this and said, well, who would want to make changes from the essence of a being to the manipulation of a being? And again, it boils down to the beings that are manipulating this world at a very high level. And we are dealing with another dimension that's been run this world in the beginning of time. I mean, you've got to go back and you've got to look at through time. You do with the Aztecs. You know, there was times where in certain days, towards the end of the last cycle, they ripped the hearts out of 30,000 people in one day. What was that about? Traumatising the spirit to trap the soul through time because it gives them access. Look at the Inquisition. When you start to become a little bit aware in the Inquisition, what they do? Not only would they kill you, but they torture you. Why would they torture you then kill you anyway to get you to submit? The moment you submit, you enter the game, they've got the soul for the future. You've got to understand that if they can traumatise the spirit, they can get access to the soul of the vehicle and they can trap the vehicle through time. That's what this is all about. Now, the medication, this is about you can no longer, no longer can you manipulate, no longer can you run your vehicle. Your defences are down. And you can be vulnerable to other things that are going to jump in. They will then use that body, if they can, to traumatise the masses wherever they can, to gain traumatise more spirits. Remember, this is the harvest. This is the time of the harvest. We need as many souls trapped in the game as one can for the future cycles of time. From these beings, that's how they're looking at it. Do you understand? The last thing they want is people to be spiritually aware of who they really are. Because the spirit is powerful. It can change the soul. The spirit is powerful. It can remove these forces. It can deal with these other forces that are coming through because they are violating the law by coming into the space of another, by coming into a dimension they don't belong to. And there's these laws. I look at the people who are on medication right through time, and not just medication, but also any form of trauma is going to do the same thing. I mean, I look at your soldiers you've got over there. I'm working here with special forces. I'm working here at times with soldiers from the Vietnam War. And at times I have spirits of Viet Cong speaking Vietnamese out of bodies as I unfold time and space to when he entered back in Vietnam. I take him out and instantly no more 40 years of trauma. You've got to understand the multi-dimensions of law and the laws of law. You're responsible for your thought, your word, your deed and your actions. But if by your thought, word, deed and action you harm another, then that will unfold back onto you because you can't escape the cycles of time. Now, if you go out and you kill another, you destroy his vehicle. Under law, the universe says, well, hang on. You destroy his vehicle, he can have yours. So he's a right to take your vehicle. Now, when he gets in, if he, excuse the expression, pissed off, can you imagine what he's going to do? You get home, what happens? Mm-hmm. Shoots the wife, shoots the kids, blow yeah, your brains right. out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. You understand what's happening with the soldiers? And they're not looking at any of this. Multi-dimensions. We are multi-dimensional beings in a multi-dimensional world, and we have to start to understand medication is not the answer. We have to understand how to deal with the cause 
of any effect. And the only person, the only thing can access the cause is your spirit. It knows how, where, when and why any of those dimensions that are part of your creation was created. It can indicate, send you there, and we can unfold time and space in that dimension. When we look at kids, look like a little four-year-old kid. He wakes up screaming at night. He's in a cold sweat. Sometimes he'll sleep peacefully half the night. Next minute, he's just, he's jerking in the bed. Uh-huh. Parents sleep with him. I went down to work with a young lad. So I saw that little boy, the spirit, into the mother. When he back to, through time with the spirit indicated we need to go to, he's back in a past life. He's in England. He's a train driver driving a train on a one-way track. Another train coming the other way. He's panicking trying to stop the train, head-on collision. His four-year-old kid was killed on the train, a pile of other kids killed on the train. When he reached four years old, it triggered off the sleeper, which has been asleep. I'll explain that in a minute. He's now trying to stop the train in his sleep. Till we went back in time, we folded time and space, we cleared the dimension, he's now sleeping peaceful at night. Normally, that would be electric shock treatment under the system we got with these kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A sleeper. They didn't teach you when you went to school that you cannot survive without three dimensions of time. You take three steps. Your last step's your past. Is next step you're in now is the present. And the choice you make of what direction you go is going to be your future. If you didn't have three dimensions of time, you'd be frozen in time. Well, let's take a dimension. You die suddenly through a trauma. That dimension becomes in suspended animation within its own hologram going nowhere. It's asleep. All it needs is a trigger. With this little boy, the four-year-old, when he hit four years old because his son died at four, was a trigger. Now that dimension is alive in present day. The trauma is still online. It's continuing on its journey because it's never been cleared until you unfold time and space and clear that dimension. Our system is not looking at dimensions. Our system is not looking at the multi-dimensions and other dimensions out there. All it's looking at is let's dumb them, let's numb them, and let's see how many bucks we can make out of it. And mm-hmm. um, you talk about governments, you talk about governments, you know, in bankruptcy, well, I'll tell you now, the millions and millions and millions that they're putting into mental health, that could be, that could be assisting those people come back in the workplace easily and saving billions of dollars. We're obviously talking about the people that you're treating who are very clearly people that need your help. I want to flip over to the other side for a minute and talk about every person on this planet has basically come in to, my terminology may not be exact, but we're dealing with a matrix. We're dealing with a system where we have basically been thrust back into this world in a life form and we are a product of previous lives and what happened between previous lives in terms of our programming. Each That's person correct. on this planet theoretically has issues. How do we deal with that as normal, so-called normal walking about people? The greatest key is what I call point zero. Point zero, you've got to understand we have action. Over here is action, over here is reaction. Action, reaction, cause and effect. Mm-hmm. But if I'm at point zero, I'm neither one nor the other. See, I cannot move through time and space into the future while I'm stuck in time. So if I've got action and reaction, I'm actually stuck in a dimension of time. Only when I get to point zero, can I can move forward through time. Now, the whole idea is if we can get to point zero, non-reactive, and every time we do react, stop and ask, why am I reacting? What am I reacting to and where did that come from? Because it means I'm reacting, acting to something I've redone before that I haven't let go of. Now, that trauma might have been as a little three-year-old child. And ever since you're three, once that's locked in the hologram, in the fractal of the hologram, it will reproduce itself through the cycles of time. Because what took place is that moment of time as a thought has now evolved to a thought form. It has now evolved to a life form. Now the life form, it's reached a life form status. The tree knows it's a tree. The grass knows it's a grass. The dog knows it's a dog. The thought only knows the thought that reproduced it. So for its survival, it will reproduce it. In other words, you are the host. It has rearranged the universe for its own survival using you as a host. The moment we become aware, whoa, why do I keep doing this all the time? Where's that coming from? 
We spot right, it. Right, right. And we externalize that change and no longer react to it. We don't feed it. If we don't feed it, it can't exist. Because that thought form, once it becomes a life form, and once it, it understands you and your reactions, it eventually evolves to another level and evolves to the level of the entity. Once it reaches the entity status, now we have compulsive disorder, multiple personality, bipolar, the schizophrenia, a whole range of other things because the life form becomes the entity which now is taking over you. And when it surfaces, you've got no control. It's evolving. Everything's evolving from a thought. Got it. Got now, the external ones that can be invited in. If we have external ones that actually become in, we invite them in. And this is where I say to people, look, you've got two worlds, an internal world to an external world of manifesting realities or the external world to the internal world. The internal world or the external world is you rearranging the universe to conform to your reality. The external world is disempowering yourself, giving power to something outside yourself. Now, I don't care what it is. Don't call anything in. Because the moment you call something in, you disempower you and give power to it over you. So then comes a manipulation of the programming of whatever that thought, whatever that thing is you've called in, it's now going to be manipulating you for its own agenda. I would suspect that almost every person on this planet is dealing with this at some level then. Of course. Because the human species has been manipulated since the beginning of time. This is about... Right now, the end of this cycle is about, this is about the time of awakening. This is about the time of realizing who we really are and no longer allowing the programs and manipulations of the soul to continue on the manipulations by these forces. This is our world. Time to get back our world. So your work is huge because um, I, know, <clears throat> I know you've trained people who are working with you but given the number of people who would fall in the scale of being people who need intervention, we're dealing with staggering numbers, but really talking, as we've just talked the last few minutes, we're dealing with a planet that needs some serious, serious triage and help dealing with their spiritual issues. So do you have like a fundamental, you talk about point zero, how do you recognize point zero how does uh, a person who's functional, walking about, able to cope on a day-to-day -day basis, get to a point zero? How do they sustain it? Okay, there's two different types of people walking around out there. There's a few different well, types, well, actually. Yeah, and but, I realize uh, I use that term mostly. Yeah. yeah, but basically, on the average, let's say, on the average, if a person is aware and a person seeking, first off, is th th there's these laws. First law is the law of intent. Second is the law of agreement. So what's your intent and what's your agreement within you? Because if your intent and agreement is you, is want to make changes, then you've set the first action into play. And you speak about the first form of matter from the invisible world, the visible world starts to play into the visible from the invisible. You can now start making change in the visible. While you stay as the victim mentality, while you stay in the victim role, you will attract like attracts like. So therefore, you will attract a cluster who will inline you and all the others around you of similarity and you all start feeding each other off this being up the top here that's manipulating the whole of you in the same game. Because like attracts like and what you find is sometimes when people attract people of similarity, they feel part of something, a cluster. They feel part of something. Okay. So we're back they to the cluster. And get back to, to the reality of saying, whoa, I came here alone. I'm going to leave alone. I'm on a journey as a spirit. This is independent. This is about me taking back control of me. This is about me letting go of the programs I've been hanging on to. Where do they come from? And the moment you ask your spirit, and see how relax, you'll have memories all of a sudden come up of maybe two years old, maybe three years old. And the moment you can look at those things, and you can let go of those things at that moment of time and come back to point zero and realise, all right, and my thing is, speak. Spirit, I no longer need those anymore. Clear them, please. Because it really is, our spirit is there for us. If we don't tell it, then it thinks we want it. It can change anything. Mm -hmm. It can change the soul. It can change the programs. It can change anything. Point zero. We don't keep focusing on it and trying to control it. The moment we focus, we try to control it, we put resistance to it. Yes, exactly. You're giving it energy, basically. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. We we have to really just spirit. I no longer need that anymore. Clear it. Blow off your time track. It's really very hard because what we're saying here is we're coming forward with something which is so new and yet it's so ancient. I mean, 60,000 years of Aboriginal culture, this is how they lived. But over 150, 200 years ago, when they came and took away the children from the families, they created trauma. The whole trauma they trade down the genetic line today, we've got cultures. You know, I went to join one of our the local community up here when I first came up on the coast 15 years ago. You know what the first thing they said to me when I went around to join them? Are you a Jehovah's Witness? Uh-huh. <laughs> Not the slightest, thank you very much. Stop coming the barriers. The church has totally taken over through the programming of their souls. You know, very few remember the past. Very few remember the old. And those that do are afraid because the church has programmed that they were evil. <clears throat> right. The church basically went in everywhere and took out the indigenous cultures and the indigenous spiritual systems that were actually dealing with this. And sub substituted a religious system. And the, uh, I look at that and say, okay, let's look at the reality. Why? Why? Because the Aboriginal culture was the closest being to nature there was. It was, it was high in his spiritual content, high in his awareness. He could communicate to the spirit of the trees, the animals, through the dream time. He could move in and out of time through what's known as a burra circle. You know, I recently went over to... to um, um, UK and I was at um, oh, Stonehenge. Okay. The moment I looked at Stonehenge, straight away I thought, one, not done by the joints. Two, it's a tourist field. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's actually a burra circle. No, it's the same totally as Aboriginal used to create burra circles. Yeah, no, it's totally desecrated now. Yeah, it used to be, it used to, be to me a wormhole in out of time. Just like the Aborigines could make, they had burra circles. Put the rocks together, they can step in and out of time and move through time. That's, I believe, exactly what this was. Known in the past, forgotten, because of Western society. So how does a Western person like myself, who does not have a shamanic background, how do we begin to access that dream time state? Look, to me, it's, it's not necessarily accessing the dream time state. It's accessing the acknowledgement first off. If I acknowledge you as a person, you in turn will acknowledge me. If I walk down the road and look someone in the eye and I just nod, they automatically will nod back because of acknowledgement. If I acknowledge my spirit, it in turn is happy to acknowledge me. Yeah. Most people don't acknowledge their spirit. It's given them all the keys under the sun, but they're given, they're given all their power to things outside themselves. They're not listening to the inner being, which is their own spirit. So therefore, the spirit sits back and says, okay, you want to run the show? I'll keep my feet up. I'll lay back. You run the show. And when everything crumbles, then you call me. That's what's happening in people's lives today. They're not acknowledging their own spirit. Remember, this is a spirit on a journey. It took the vehicle. It's in a vehicle, and when the vehicle, it's like if I'm going, if I'm going from here to Brisbane and my vehicle breaks down, I'll take another vehicle. Well, mm -hmm. if this vehicle breaks down, I haven't finished the journey, I'll take another vehicle. Do you understand? But it's the spirit who's driving the vehicle through time. Let's acknowledge the spirit for what it truly is, because it can rearrange the universe. It can, it can, I mean, I look at guys like Dynamo, Chris Angel. Yes, These guys yes. who can walk through glass. Yes, yes. yes. These guys are creating their own reality. To me, I, I think there's going to be more people coming out in the future doing the same thing. I go back 40 years ago and longer. And when I first started doing what I was doing, look, I was doing mind magic and I was constantly saying, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Because we're never taught it was. We're always programmed, this can't be done, this can't be done. This The negativity in, into us all the time. So I kept on going down my research, but my research was I want to know more about the mind and what's happening in reality. I want to know more about mental health and what's happening with mental health in reality. What is a reality? 
You know, when I can when I can throw a party and I can create what you'd call an illusion by creating make a tree grow in the middle of the room with oranges on it, and people pick the orange, eat the orange, remember how juicy the orange is, and people say, What's it like to eat something that doesn't exist? And these five people say, What are you talking about? I know what they ate. <laughs> well, normally that's, that's, an, that's a reality, that's an illusion. Yeah. But to those five people, that was a reality. And that got me thinking, What is a reality? Because that was a reality. It was only an illusion to those that weren't in that reality. So therefore we had two separate realities going here. It was a reality. So my, my research for 40 years has got to understand how do you access a reality and what is a reality? Because whatever's going on in the mind of a being is a reality for that being. That's where we have to find the cause, the effect of that reality, to make changes to that reality. And that's not what's happening under mental health. Today there's a, a movement, and it's a movement back to shamanism, and part of that movement is rooted in some of the ancient rituals, mainly out of South America, that have to do with the ingestion of certain indigenous substances such as ayahuasca, peyote, things like that. And I wanted to get your take on this because it, it, there's a confusion here. Uh, we have I'm going to go back to shamanism and reality, but at the same time, you're telling me these drugs are portals, they're gateways that open uh, up things. Listen, do you know how many people, do you know how many clients I've had that have come to me that have been on ayahuasca or some of these other drugs? And, you know, uh, I've had people that were running the courses bring them to me because they've been out of their tree, so to speak. Massive stuff. Yes, it does. That was wormhole other dimension. Watch this. This is part of the laws of law. He who enters a dimension of another will be governed by the laws of that dimension. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you enter someone else's dimension, they've got a right to your dimension. That's it. Balance. Universe. Yeah. Anybody that's done ayahuasca, peyote, any of these hallucinogenics knows that they've entered into a dimension of other beings who are extremely powerful and extremely territorial. And that's why I wanted to get your take on this, because I come across people who are advocating use of various hallucinogenic substances as therapeutics, as a way to attain certain spiritual levels. And I kind of know where you're coming from with this, and part of my job as an interviewer is to get it all out on the table. So I wanted to get your take on it. Okay. Let's, let's just go back to these beams again. These guys, they're masters of illusion. They'll be anything you want to get in, you know? Mm-hmm. No matter what it is, whatever your, whatever your thought process is, they can manipulate the thought process. They can be whatever you want to make you happy to get access. They need access. So therefore, once they get in, now what am I hearing? When a person's on the table, I'm, I'm hearing, one, I'm talking to the spirit of the being. Sometimes the soul drops in. I remember when I was five years old, that's the soul. Step out of it. Not interested. Then the headspace, the ego will drop in. And the ego will start to run off and ramp and rave. But every now and then the life form or life form inside the being will start to try to justify its existence because everything seeks survival. A lot of the time I'm hearing life forms trying to justify why they are so good and why they should survive. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything seeks survival. If you give power to it, it doesn't want to die. It wants to grow and take over. So through these beings, they're going to justify why they're so good. Look, I've had people come in here, I'm not kidding, and they're away with the fairies, excuse the expression, but they're ramping and raving how good I was and how good it is and how spiritually aware. And I'm not kidding. If you think you're spiritually aware, then I'd hate to be inside your body right now because from outside here, there's no way in the world you are. You've got other things in there that are manipulating and running you. And you can hear it when they're talking. So the only gateways to this aren't drugs, but other things as well. Let's just talk about it. Sexual practices. How do they impact people on the level of being spiritually entrapped? Well, it it depends again what we're talking about in that sense. You, You know, I mean, let's face it. In look at the the, the obliques, the most um, community centres, most centres. And look at the obliques, the stone pillar. 
mm -hmm. represents the phallic symbol. Phallic symbol, yeah, of course. Okay, so yep. why? Have a good think about it, why? And the reason why is that man can harness energy from nothing in this universe. And when man harnesses that energy through sex and prior to the climaxing of sex, there's a massive amount of energy that can be harnessed and actually be directed. But what can happen is other beings can come into experience and harness and utilise that energy for themselves in their dimension through the body. You see, we have an ability to manifest realities. We have an ability to harness energy and to that energy can be utilised if we know how to utilise that energy. But other beings also want that energy. Humans are a you know, magic source of energy. Right. This was this goes back to Alistair Crowley and the sex magic rituals that he was involved with as well. Because Alistair Crowley, through occultism, and you've got to say occultism, you know, you draw your circle, put your pentagram in your circle, <laughs> you create a tallest field. You can conjure entities and other beings in, yeah, and they'll carry out your very command. When you have your rituals, these things will come through, and they'll make you feel high, real high, because mm -hmm. they're giving you extra energy again. But there's a price. And the price is purely simply for them to give you this and what you want is it's a takeover of the soul. They want your soul for the future, and they got it once you enter the game. Unless you unfold time and space and break that again back in time. So occultism is playing around the dark side and understanding when they use negative energies, in other words, other beings, for their own self-gain. Law, L-O-R-E, laws of law, is universal knowledge. Now, let's, let's just understand this for a moment. As scientists, as a, as a scientist, if you take a negative electron and you hit it with a positive electron, it actually creates a positron. And as far as that negative electron out of this dimension back into a past, it doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when you take positive and you override negative, you can actually change that dimension from existing. Then, Utilising powers because they are entering their game. The difference is know how to control your game. So you bring them into your game, you can deal with these beings. But you enter their game. Look, I got, I got hit. I don't usually get hit. I don't usually get hit what I'm doing, but I had a, I had a client a few, about two months ago. And the client slot both his wrists. He's 26 years old. His mother brought him along. I walked into work on the guy, and as I walked into his field, bang, whoa, I got hit. Whoa, went outside, drink of water, wow, this is big. I walked back in, bang, I got hit again. I walked out, I drink of water, okay, spirit, what's going on? And it said he made an agreement for the entity to take him out. You've got to enter the entity's game to get to him. Thank you. I now am aware of what's taking place. Mm -hmm. But this is my game. I've got three fields around my house. Field around the room I'm working in. Anything comes in is going to get dealt with good and proper. Anything enters the boundary of my home, such agreements come into my game. Any entity that's going to enter or come into my game, stay outside the fence line. Because the moment you come in, you get dealt with. So now I'm aware of what's happening. He's in my room. This is my game. I stepped into the entity's game, locked onto the guy's eyes, went straight in. I took out the entity. Do you understand how subtle it is? Yeah. He went to the game with another subject that lost the game. And he'd made the agreement with the entity, so I had to enter its game to get to him. That's subtle. And they're powerful, some of these beings. You know, my early days, you know, I was thrown 30 feet through the air by invisible force. In my early days. <laughs> I, I landed on a couch. I said, okay, I'll get the head, I'll wait. I wasn't afraid, I was fascinated. The guy was doing automatic writing. I was riding bikes at the time, I was waiting and waiting outside. So I walked in, I said, come on. I hit him on the shoulder, and as I touched him on the shoulder, I got picked up and thrown across the room by this force. Back in those days, I didn't realise what I was doing. Today I understand. He had made an agreement, integrated agreement, with this entity. I entered its game and it just threw me out of the game. Today I understand how to control the game. I teach my students how to control the game. I won't just teach this to anyone. Now, if you've got people that are on drugs and other things, you start teach them some of this stuff here, you know, some big stuff can go down. 
I teach students that really want to understand what's going on to make changes because this is very powerful. And if you really understand the laws of law, but you can't understand the laws of law if you're taking drugs. Do you understand? Yeah. You can't be in, you can't be in two places at once. Okay, so drugs, interf- drugs interfere with the laws of law. No, no, sorry. The laws of law is, is first law is intent, agreement, and your free will. This okay. is part of it. Right. You choose the free will and the drugs. You choose to enter their game. Right. You understand? You so it is an agreement. Well, it is an agreement that at that point. Without permission. Okay. To make changes. Yeah. Now, this is the same. This is the same. Hey, look, we've cleared people. I mean, I had some woman come up. You won't believe this. Byron Bay, you know, you get a lot of, you get a lot of um, hippie dog people down there, and uh, she comes up, and she, look, I took at least eight or nine things out of this woman, and they were big, bouncing around all the table. And when I'd finished, the first thing she says to me was, Wow, I feel great. But that's not going to stop me from smoking dope. I smoke it every night. I want to smoke it again when I go back home tonight. And I said, well, what are you coming to me for? I said, because you open the door and I'll be back in again. You open the door all these dimensions, and if they don't jump in, something else will, because they need the door to be open through your free will. You go to rituals, any form of ritual, and you open the door by calling things in. Free will choice. Don't go and get cleared if you're going to call them in again, because I'll tell you now. I take you from the fishbowl. The fishbowl is the matrix where you see the fish swimming around circle thinking they're going somewhere. That's our society. When I take you from here out to the matrix out here and we start clearing you on another level, you step from one out of matrix to another matrix. For each matrix you step out onto, there are bigger and more powerful forces to combat you. So if you go back to your drugs, once you're out of this matrix, you get hit worse than you were because bigger beings on next dimension. The whole idea is we've got to escape the matrix through the cycles. Now, the matrix, and I want to define this a little better, the matrix is both the dimensional aspect of our planet, our world, three-dimensional plus fourth dimension, which is time. Is that correct? Well, depends again your terminology of it. Okay. Um, to me, every created dimension is within its own dimension of time. And to understand that, the dimension of time is from the moment it's created to the moment it's finished. But it can be for one second. It can be an hour. It can be a week. It can be a month. It can be a year. It can be a hundred years. It can be thousands. thousand It can be a million years. It, in its own dimension, is still active through time on a lineal time as we look at lineal time, a million years. But all it really is is a dimension from its beginning to its end. The universe doesn't care. You want to hang on for five seconds, that's right. You want to hang on for a million years, that's fine. It's only from its beginning to its end. And it will keep surfacing lifetime after lifetime after lifetime until that dimension has been cleared that you're stuck in. Now, as for the matrix, you visualise a matrix, a grid system around this earth. But if you now go into radionics, in radionics and Aboriginal cultures, they can see a lot of the, and a lot of people out there also can see the ley lines. And you've got this matrix grid, you've got these ley lines every 40 inches. Well, it's interesting because every 40 inches is a metre, which is 40. The Earth's biorhythm is 40 years of the cycle. So everything breaks down to the four, which is the square, which is the change from visible to the visible. So what takes place is that the, every 40 inches is a ley line. In radionics, the goal might be at 37. It'll repeat itself now at 77. Every 40 it repeats itself. So what happens on these different ley lines, they're actually like another matrix, another matrix outside, layers and layers. When you fly in a plane, look at the clouds. They're on a ley line. They're on a level. I had a really interesting case. Um, I, I was going to clear Rottnest Island. It's an Aboriginal island off Western Australia where... Aboriginal all over Western Australia were taken and imprisoned. And the elders called me in to clear the island because it was full of a lot of uh, traumatised, we had thousands of traumatised spirits on there, which we bought through and we cleared. But the same time I went to leave, the woman I was staying with, her daughter's apartment, ten stories up in Perth, at a quarter past eight as I was leaving, the phone crashed, the computer crashed, the TV crashed. 
Everything crashed. <laughs> so I like said, okay. Studio sometimes. <laughs> you know, well, I looked at this and said, okay, someone's trying to get my attention. <laughs> so the next day I went back to the unit, we took a few of the elders back and went back and uh, we saw at the apartment. And a really interesting thing came through. You know, what happened was, well, two interesting things. One of them was that a group of Aborigines came through spirits and they said thousands of years ago, an alien race arrived and interbred with us. We want you to change time so it can never happen in the future cycles, which we did. Then all of a sudden, the surrogate said, whoa, never seen this one before. I said, what? He said, this is the thing that shut down the TV, the phone and the, all the communications. I said, what is it? He said, it doesn't have form. It's pure energy. Then I have my command, wherever you are, come forward, come forward now. Next minute, it's talking out of him. I bring these strings and I'm talking out of the person on the table. I said, why did you invade the unit and shut down the phone, the TV and the computer? We didn't. I said, yes, you did. I said, why did you invade the unit and shut it down? Then he said, we were here first. And all of a sudden, instantly I got a flash. Oh, my God. They're up here on a ley line. And this 10-story unit has come up into their world. And they said, we want it out. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how can we do that? And what they said was, move the ley line. So I actually moved the ley line out over a golf course. Then I asked, is that all right? They said, yes. And we felt the change of energy as we cleared it. You've got all these different levels and different dimensions. Just because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So in terms now of... My language breaks down in dealing with this at some point because I'm trying to stay kind of in in your terminology. If we consider that we are in this dimensional plane, zone, three-dimensional space-time, we come into this at birth... We do not have knowledge of our previous lives or our previous programming, our previous conditioning, the between life, I'll call it torture, that is often performed on souls. How does a person coming in, incarnating, theoretically stay clear throughout their life? And I know that's kind of reframing a question I asked you earlier, but it's, it's kind of important to me to understand what is happening on the soul level and what's happening on the spiritual level? Uh, okay. The first thing is recognition. Unless you recognize somebody, they're not going to recognize you. But the moment you recognize spirit, you recognize soul, it in turn can recognize you. So what we've got here is, first off, just say you in the past were a violent father to your children. Okay. Then as a spirit... You're going to come into a vehicle that's going to have violent parents. So you learn by your own experiences of what you did to another. This is the balance. Now, what usually takes place is when you come into the violent parents, you don't like what's happening. So sometimes you will then create what's known as an altar. In other words, I don't like all this violence around me, so I'm going to create an escape university of reality beside me here becomes an altered reality. Okay. Every time you want out of that reality, you step into this altered reality. Now that altered reality, you can start to imagine whatever you create anything you want in that reality. And it's growing. But as a reality, it eventually becomes a thought form to a life form, and eventually it actually can take over your whole life as an altar because you keep sliding a bit, and now it's taken over, and you really step out of this reality totally down the track because it's not in that reality, not in this reality. You chose to come here because the things you need to learn to bring back in the balance. The universe says, hey, listen, I couldn't care less. Whatever you've done, that was your free will choice of your experiences. But because you're supposed to be your thought, your word, your doing your actions, how else will you understand to come back in the balance to our universe unless you experience what you created? Then you understand that experience and you may not create it again in the future cycle of time. It's all about balance. Okay. So you're choosing the parents, which is the soul vehicle through time you're going to come into for the experiences. But it's still the spirit through time, which can have its own trauma through time that's online. Got it. Got it. Got it? Okay. Okay. 
And the reason I'm going over this with you a little more carefully is even though we've done two previous interviews, uh, those interviews were in concert with other people. And I didn't feel like I really had an opportunity to go this deep with you one-on-one. Because what we're talking about is taking responsibility for who we are and our actions on a level that, again, it was very difficult for me to understand. We come into this world. We have no knowledge of prior lives. We, boom, hit this planet. We have all kinds of shit that hits us. We get really so, screwed up. Just going to stop for a moment. Sure. We sure. said we have no knowledge of prior lives. Your spirit is aware of everything in prior, okay, in prior lives. Okay, conscious knowledge. If, if I use hypnosis... Then I access the past soul of the being, okay. and you'll be speaking fluently me, fluently. Just say you only know English, and just say you're in German, your past life. Mm-hmm. If I use hypnosis and access the soul, you'll be speaking fluently to me in German, and tell me who you live with, who you're married, what's happening. You're the every living experience of that moment in time in the now. Okay. Just like your spirit will relive the trauma of the past through time of the vehicles it's had. Okay, so we don't have conscious knowledge. That's correct. Because the moment we come into the vehicle, first off, this is why Steiner education. Steiner education won't teach the child anything for the first seven years. Because the first seven years, every seven years is a change. Right. The first seven years is your spirit bringing the events through from the past and setting them up and experiencing and setting up what needs to be set up for the future. Now from eight years old to 14, the second cycle is the programming stage. This is why the old Pope used to say, give me a boy before eight and I'll give you a boy of God for life. This is why in the Sudan they're abducting children and turn them into boy soldiers. Because seven to 14, eight to 14 is the second phase. The time of the programming of the soul. Now once the soul's programmed, you go to school. Sit down, shut up and speak when you're spoken to. This is about suppressing your spirit and program an external reality upon you that's not your reality. This is part of the programming of your soul. Now, once the program of the soul is in place, it sets up the cycles of similarity for the future. And there's repeat patterns. Your prisoners in the system, repeating. I don't know why I keep doing the same thing over and over. People in our society, I don't know, keep doing the same thing over and over. They're stuck in time of the repeat patterns of the soul. Now comes more programming. It's constantly getting programmed. Every day you're getting programmed. And what we do, we fail to listen to the inner being, our spirit. And we let the programming take over ourselves as now manipulating us. So the purest essence for us coming in is that first seven years of life. That is where we really are the closest to original nature. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. And from that, and from that, you know, you, you take children. The amount of children out there today that remember past lives, and they talk about it. And the first thing the mother says, mother says, says, "Don't be stupid. That doesn't exist." Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's suppressive. It's suppressive. In other words, I'm not listening to you, spirit. You're no good. Yeah, you just basically forced me to concede my first argument that we have no knowledge of our. Past lives. Yeah. I now understand exactly where you're coming from with that. I agree with it. I've seen it. I vaguely recall it as a child, and I saw it in my own children. So, yeah. Can you imagine Can you imagine if we had schools that developed this in the children? They're doing it in Russia. They're doing it in China today with the children. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Somebody just recently sent me a bunch of information on this. Yeah. So we're working. I, mean, I, would, I would love to see a school set up to, to develop the spirit in the child. Now, Steiner education, as I said, its children in its schools, it's about letting the spirit express itself for the first seven years. And you look at those kids in Steiner education compared to other kids down the track, you see the energy of these kids totally different, totally different. You know? Yeah, I've interviewed people who who have been part of the the Steiner. Uh, uh, what is it called here in the U.S.? I forget, but the Steiner system and it's superb and it's really not based on this regimentation that we have in our Western culture. 
just really basically ingraining the children into a culture that's as sick as the culture around them. I mean, look at us. We're drug addled. We're at war. We're <laughs> ruining our economies. We're killing people by the millions on this planet. So, I mean, you know, again, it goes back to the how, you know, the level of sickness that I know you're dealing with, with the people that you, you work on. But on a mass scale, we're dealing with this on a planetary level right now. You called this the time of the harvest. What does that mean to you exactly? Is it an epoch, a cycle? Are we in a grand cycle in terms of uh, the galaxy? What does that mean exactly, Steve? Okay. To understand that again, and that is when you walk, you can't survive without three dimensions of time. The last step you pass, the one you now is your present, the next one you're going to take through your free will choice will be your future. Now, on the big scale of things, you have a past life, you've got a present life, and you will have a future life. Now, on the bigger scale of things, deja vu is the grand scale where it's happened before. Mm-hmm. Everything's happening now has happened before. Nothing new under the sun. The past and the present will now set up the future cycles of time. But if you're in the present and fold time and space in the past, we change the past so the new future cycle we lock in the new cycle of the future, then when the conjunction takes place in August next year, this year, I should say, we're there now, August this year, the conjunction takes place, time will loop itself. Now, now to understand that, you know, people are going all these uh, imaginary things again, go off on tangents. If I work with a client and I unfold time and space upon a dimension, a lot of the time that dimension disappears and they don't even remember they had the issue. They don't remember it existed. Mm-hmm. When time loops itself at the end of conjunction, you're going to be two things: inside time or outside time. Inside time, Groundhog Day, it's all going to start again, just like it did last time. The universe doesn't care whether you get out this time or next time; it doesn't, it doesn't care. It's about the involvement of each being and where they're ready. And if you're outside time, then just like when we change time, we loop it. We give you a new time track. So when the time comes a conjunction. If you've cleared and you're ready to move the new dimension of reality, then you evolve in the next dimension of reality. Everything's about evolving. Everything's constantly evolving. Your thoughts are evolving. Everything in life is evolving. The hologram is evolving. But you can be stuck within that fractal of the hologram through time again until you finally deal with what you need to deal with. To make it more simply, if everybody left into the new future cycle of time with imbalances, we're in a chaotic world. For only through balance can a planet stay suspended in space. Everything in the cycles of time is balance. Every imbalance must come back into balance. Yes, yes. Each one of you as part of a fractal must come back into balance for the whole. If you want to stay out of balance, that's fine. Down the track, in the future cycles of time, you may be ready. Not everybody's going to be ready. Because there's new ones coming in, there's old ones going out, and it's a continual cycle of time. Right, right, right. So really our goal then is to get into point zero and maintain that and to stay in the now. Is that a fair way to, to put that, to live very much in the present, which is really, isn't that really the epitome of dream time anyway, of being in the present? Well, it is. It is. Uh, I mean, there was a little bit more uh, example. Like, with the dream time, uh, cultural-wise, and dream time, the dream time meant through the dream time, I could sit down the dream time and, well, I'd say, let's say the past culture would sit down the dream time by the fire. It would call in the spirit of the kangaroo or the spirit of the goanna, the spirit of the trees. Mm-hmm. And it could communicate the tree, the goanna, and what happened, it, it asked for food. And the spirit of the kangaroo would donate its vehicle. The vehicle's in fight or flight. But the spirit donates. Next day, it turns up and there's your lunch. Because everything is done on this energy field of the, through the dream time, you see? That's what the dream time was really about. Right. Through the communication, through the dream time of other animals and spirits in nature, communicating with everything in nature. Um, so I got off track there. <laughs> Your question again, just came back. No, no, no. That you actually, you actually went there because what I was basically asking you is how do we connect? How do we reconnect? How do we stay connected? How do we not get into the tangents that take our 
minds and fracture us, assuming that we're functionally healthy. Well, well, that's it. The communication is to understand that we are a spirit. And as a spirit, we can actually manifest realities. As a spirit, once we communicate, we can tell all at once, it's there for us. It can rearrange the universe for us to give us what we want. Mm. Stop. Think. It's been giving you and everyone out there exactly what they wanted. The yeah. misery. Yeah. The problems. <laughs> That's what they've been hanging on to. So it says, well, hang on, if you want to hang on to it, then I'll keep giving it to you because it's what you're wanting. It's, it's a bit like, well, I look at it as being the waiter at a restaurant. And when you go to a restaurant, it comes out with a menu. You look yes. at the menu and yes. you say, I'll have baked eggs for breakfast. Yeah. It comes out and delivers the bacon and eggs. Change the menu. Because your spirit's there to deliver what it is that you're hanging on to. It gets up in the morning, says, what's on the menu? It looks up at the screen and says, ah, bitterness, bit of depression, bit of anger. Okay. So it'll set up again, bit of depression, bit of anger for the day again. Tell you don't want it. Try and spot where it's coming from and make changes at point zero. Because all we're doing is we're not thinking... We are just responding to reactions of life forms that are within us. The moment we take that conscious decision to make changes, then the universe, the intent and the agreement will go into play. And the moment we speak it, we start to change the invisible to the visible world of reality. Perfect. I understood that. That's perfect. That that really... What you just said there was the nutshell I was looking for. Um, I want to I want to take a couple of minutes here before we end the interview tonight because I know you have some things you want to share of current projects that you're embarking on and things you're going to be doing over the course of 2013 as well. You've been you've been to the United States this past year. And you've worked doing training with people, and you also got a taste of what things are like here in the States. Share a little bit with us about what that was like and your observations and what you're looking forward to for this year. Okay, well, it's funny because my first impression of coming to the States was landing in L.A. airport. And, <laughs> you know, the, yeah, the song at L.A. airport, you know. And that's, that's the most depressing place I've ever been to when you look at it and an uninviting place you've ever been to. It's like, you know, we don't want people here. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, um, but when I go on the East Coast, again, look, the people, I'm finding a lot of the people are scared. I'm finding fear in a lot of the people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was even told at cases, you know, you know, don't walk around there. When you walk downtown, don't look someone in the eye because they're liable to you know, attack you. Well, my thing is, I always look people in the eye, and I just nod, and I always get a response back, because I'm acknowledging the spirit of the person, you see. Um, I found that, you know, going through New York and going through some of the other suburbs there, the, the amount of places I'm seeing that are, you know, closed down, the amount of places that are boarded up, and, and yet, you know, I'm, I'm finding people living on cardboard boxes on the streets. To me... Uh, yeah, it's I, insane, I, I, isn't I, it? Yeah. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. you got all these... You've got all these places boarded up no one's living in, and you've got people on the streets. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Um, that was one part of it. Two, I find that um, a, a lot of the people, there's a lot of programming. What I mean programming, um, let me be careful when I say this here. The soul is programmed into ways of thinking. Yes. The soul is programmed yes. in many different ways and facets. I've found that there are a number of people that have taken on the assumptions and beliefs of programs. And there's a difference between assumption and belief. If you assume it to be, and you believe it to be, then because of your assumption and belief, you'll instantly override his spirit. And it can't show you because it says, well, you're not going to listen to me because you've got your own beliefs. Right, right. So you can all put the assumption and beliefs, you rotate those aside so they can really get in and look at that the spirit show them really what the keys are and what's going on there. Um, I found that the, the crew I we, we trained with the crew, which it was good, it was a good little good little crew there. Um, I'm hoping to come back and um, do LA in a couple of months' time and possibly down Colorado 
I've had students down there wanting to set something up. and um, no, They can sure use you in Colorado, as they could in Connecticut and a few other places in this country right now, Steve. Well, well my, my thing is the more students I can train, the more they can be out there yeah. doing what we're doing and, and clearing up. And that's really important. Um, apart from that, overall in America, I, I did find it's more than anything, I think, was fear. There's a lot of people in fear. Yeah, especially if you go into a city, you're going to you're going to be able to. It's palpable. You walk on a city street, even the suburbs here, fear is everywhere. People are fearful. I I sense it on a day to day basis. The spirit of fear yeah, is and, all and over. Well, this. Remember, you know, while you while fear is in there, and you're focusing on this fear, you actually create it. Mm-hmm. You actually create. You're feeding the entity itself up here. You're feeding the cluster up here. That's been created to create the fear, and the question is, where is the fear coming from? You know, is the fear has the fear been, you know, programmed? Is it is it? You know, I, I okay. I look at some of the mind control stuff that's really going on through microwaves. You know, today they're using microwaves, today they're using light, and today they're using sound. Well, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna try and set up structures to control other countries, where are you gonna experiment with it? We're going to test it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Your native populace. Okay. Right. That, that's it. Yeah. And how many people have actually, subliminal, even knowing it, had programs through microwaves, through light, or through sound, through your TV, through the radio, um, through sound and subliminal, through that, through microwaves over cities? How many people have been manipulated through their thought patterns by those processes. I mean, we know when they went to Iraq, first thing they did is start microwave towers all over the place. Mm-hmm. That's what come out of the bunkers, that's what they're using. Well, would they test it all? And if so, to me, what I say is, I say the spirit has the ability to change the soul, and the soul is the one that takes on the programs. And remember, you look beyond who's doing this. Don't look at the military, don't look at the government. Look beyond. Who's running those beyond? Who's dictating beyond? Right, you know? right. Um, you, look, you look at your schools. I mean, let's face it, in your schools. Look at your universities right now. Your university getting millions and millions and millions of dollars. You know where it's coming from? Research to change from the pharmaceutical system. industry, and I've had tenured professors at major universities in this country tell me that on the air. That's one lot. But the other lot is right now there's, there's like 40 million one university, 30 million to another, 20 million to another coming from Saudi Arabia yeah. yeah, to change the schooling system, to change and bring in, you know, you don't want to know where your homegrown terrorists are coming from. You've got to have a look at some of the programming that's going on and where it's coming from. I'll send you, a, I'll send you some stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, you. I think I'll you just hit a vein that I'm not familiar with. The Saudi Arabia <laughs> thing kind of took me, yeah, but I, I'm vaguely aware of the influence there. You know, quite honestly, the we'll just look at the injection of fear we were given here uh, on the 14th of December with the school shootings in Connecticut and what proportion that's taken on in the, in the national consciousness. People were terrified now of having their children in public schools, and well, they should, but those children are on drugs too. And you have a massive media campaign that's now aimed at basically funneling this fear into our living rooms through our television sets and our radios and our screens on our computers to do what? To traumatize, traumatize the spirit. Yeah. Exactly. To traumatize the spirit. You know, that then leaves the defenses down so they're vulnerable now for the programming. Remember, they need to traumatize the spirit to program the soul. The moment you become aware of it, you don't take on the program. Yes. This is the key. Exactly. Awareness. Awareness. Yeah, awareness. Of what's really going on. Awareness. Yeah. So you have, um, <clears throat> you're traveling the world almost constantly, I, I take it. You're very busy. I know you do a lot of work in Australia, New Zealand, and places like that. Uh, how about Europe? Are you working in Europe at all? Um, look, at present, I've, I've got um, people trained in 23 countries. Good. Most of those are either flown in here or flown in America or flown into the UK when I was teaching or flown to New Zealand to do it. And they want me to go to their countries and teach it because 
Um, once people experience and see it one on one, you know, I don't like, you know, I prefer one on one with students. I teach my students how to do surrogacy, but one thing about surrogacy is I've got the student on the table, the surrogate, mm-hmm. I've got the practitioner, and I've got the client. Now, what tell me? It tells me I've got three spirits, I've got three souls, I've got three life forms, mm-hmm. I've got beliefs and assumptions, and three egos. Whatever's attached to the client is going to be coming through on the table. Now, who's it belong to? Does it belong to the client? Does it belong to a belief system? Does it belong to a life form? When it's coming through, or does it belong to the student on the table as a, as, as a, who, who may have triggered off something of similarity? Mm-hmm. These are what I call the variables. To me, look, we're getting good results, but to me, there's variables. And I like to know, hey, Will, if you're on the table in front of me, Straight away, I can tell who's talking. Is it the spirit talking, the soul talking, a life form talking, the ego talking, or something else? I can t- tell straight away. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. And I can deal with it there and then. If you're not on the table, then you've got all these other variables to take into consideration. And this is why my thing is, look, if you're on the table, one-on-one, you're getting results because we're seeing exactly what we're dealing with here, and we can make changes to those dimensions. You know, But this is, again... This is only a tip of what we're dealing with. Let me just go into some of the other areas. You know, as I said, you've got the thought forms, you've got the life forms, and you've got the beliefs. I'll give you some examples here. A woman come to me, she's got yelling and screaming going on in the head. In her reality, this means she's going to things attached, and it's attacking her, it's attacking her. So my comment is, look, that's a belief. That's an assumption and a belief. No, it's not. No, it's not. She's saying, screaming her head off. Mm-hmm. I said, listen to me again. The effect is you have yelling and screaming in the head. The assumption is it's coming from this person. I'm not interested in your assumption. I want only the effect so your spirit can give me the cause. But while you've got the belief in the assumption, you can override your spirit because your belief will override it. Once we did that and we got the beliefs out of the way, it took us straight back to... Eight years old, a father and a brother screaming on each other. He's petrified. They created a thought form that evolved to a life form. Forty years later, it's evolved to an entity. We're still yelling and screaming at her. Until yeah. he took it out, yelling and screaming stop. That, that's the thought form, the life form. Then you've got people out there with Tourette syndrome, barking like a dog and plucking like a chicken. If you take on, you kill an animal. You can take on that animal spirit. If you go past an animal dead on the side of the road and you feel sorry for it, you can actually take on that animal. Now, what happens is, if you've got offences down, that animal will actually come forward and at times be knacking itself through you and you've got no control. Now you get spirits invade bodies. If you kill another through time, no matter how many, you know, you go back and you're at war and you've killed hundreds, you can have hundreds of spirits in you that are stuck in that dimension to in full space and time. But they can, when you have a few drinks, take over and they can be living their trauma through you. Now we've got cases with road accidents. I've got a woman who's, she's had three spinal operations. She's riddled with pain still. She comes to me, get her on the table. Goes back 18 years old. Next minute she's screaming hysterically. I forgot, I forgot, I totally forgot what happened. <laughs> Head on collision in the car when I was 18. Thank you, what happened? The other woman died. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I checked, what have I got? The spirit of the other woman's jumped into her. She died of spinal injuries. The spirits live in the spinal injury sure. She's had three spinal operations. The moment I brought the spirit up and folded space time and released it, instantly all the spinal issues disappeared. They weren't hers in the first place. Many clients we've had with spirits that don't belong to them live in their trauma through them, including animal spirits. Then you've got, you know, in nature. You can go through in nature and you clear areas, all the trees. Hang on. Those trees were alive. That's right. That's right. Yeah. They've had a sp- you don't have trauma in that area. And you're going to build and live in that area where the trauma is? <laughs> and you want why there's a lot of trauma going on in some of these areas? Think about it. I've been in places where there was a sense of desolation. Okay? It may have been a desolation in the soil, in the foliage around it, but I've walked through forests and I've I've hiked forests since I was a little kid. I know the terrain. I know what the earth feels like here in my gut. And I've been in places where the earth cries, where it's grieved, where you feel it. There's pain coming out of it. 
And this is something that I don't think the Western mind has any sense of anymore. This attunement to the vibrations and the frequencies of our surroundings and how it impacts us. Yeah, yeah certainly. Do you remember, remember the yeah. laws again? The laws of law. He who enters the game of another is subject to the laws of the game. You go into an area that's had trauma. You can actually take on that trauma because you've chosen to enter that area of trauma. Yeah. We yeah. go into communities where they they. But like years ago, you could go and get an Aboriginal hunting license. And you go out for a quota for the weekend. Shoot three or four Aborigines. Yep, 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 so right. what happens is that we've got areas of genocide. And I'm called into many times in areas of genocide where those spirits are still stuck in the trauma as if it happened two seconds ago. We bring them through and fold time and space. We change the past and present to release those spirits for the future so it can never happen again in the future cycles of time. Trauma can be cleared in areas as well. Nature can be traumatized. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. And just understand that in those areas. You know, I teach my students how to bring a tree through and have a talking out of you on the table. As an animal, they can bring it through and have a talking out of you. People say, how could a tree talk it? Well, just imagine you're a mini miner and you've got a friend driving a semi. You have a set of lights and so they go drag. You take off with the mini and you're in and out of the traffic. Half an hour later, your mate pulls up, swap drivers. Now you're, you're in the semi and your mate's in the mini. Okay. The semi was designed to pull 40 tonnes. The mini was designed to get in and out of the traffic. This body is designed to talk to me in English. When I swap drivers, by bringing the spirit of the tree to you, it will speak to me in English through your body. Yes. Yeah. It knows everything that took place. Yeah. Okay? Got it. It has memories. It has memories. One other area I want to touch on with you is, uh, speaking of nature and memories, is working with water. You know that water re is a very heavy, it's very resonant. It both contains and can amplify uh, sound and vibration. Um, have you had experiences working with waters, and have you used water in any of your, your healing? Yeah, what I used to do, I don't do it anymore. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, I short circuit so many things, but... What I used to do is I used to get people and when I finished my sessions, I'd get a glass of water and I'd get the whole of the water. And then I'd say, I want you to focus on the changes and focus on what you want for the future. Take a big breath, hold it, lock it in, then drink the water. Uh -huh. Because it takes on memory. It can project memory into the water and when you drink it, it then goes through the hologram. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That was something I really wanted to ask you about. It was one of the questions that I had that I was trying to work in somehow today because it's something that I have an interest in. Steve, it's been really cool talking to you today and getting this information out. And um, We're going to post this show up along with uh, the article that you had sent me, the video as well, and all your contact information. And keep us posted on when you're going to be traveling, especially when you're going to be back here in the United States or somewhere close to us. And uh, we'll get that information out. And I think that'll be March, February. We're trying for that for. And I've now got to be back in April because um, I've been invited to talk at a, the expo in April. Also somewhere, but I'm not sure if they're weird as yet. Well, if you're on the East Coast, hopefully I'll be able to make it. I didn't realize you were in New York the last time because I'm close enough. I could have actually probably made that, but um, I'm looking forward at some point to being able to see you and meet you. Yeah, it'd be nice to catch up. It would indeed. Very good, my friend. Well, uh, it's already tomorrow where you're at, but it's still today here, so it's a new year for everybody, and I wish you well this year. Steve Richards, thanks for coming on Off Planet Radio, and we'll be talking again real soon. Thank you. Catch you on the track. This is our planet radio.